Game of Thrones has become one of the most popular TV series of all time, and certainly the most popular fantasy TV series. But what exactly is this genre that we refer to as fantasy, or high fantasy if you want to get specific? The Lord of the Rings novels were not the first in this genre, but they were responsible for popularizing and defining many elements that later authors, like George R.R. R. Martin, would adopt. For instance, the medieval-ish fantasy world that the story takes place in, the existence of magic and sorcery, and the inclusion of mythological creatures or races. I use the word mythological because the creatures in The Lord of the Rings, The Chronicles of Narnia, and Game of Thrones either come directly from or are inspired by mythology. George R. R. Martin may give these creatures original names or add properties that are specific to his story, but their origins are in very old lore. So in this video I will examine the mythology and folklore behind five creatures in Game of Thrones. Let's get started. Number 1. Giants Last time we've seen a giant, Jon Snow. Like many creatures on this list, stories of giants come from an oral tradition that goes back into prehistory. These typically large humanoid creatures can be found in the mythology of many cultures around the world, and often represent chaotic entities in opposition with the noble gods of the culture. In folklore, giants are often used to explain natural phenomena, like earthquakes or basalt columns, and were sometimes thought to have built ancient structures long after the true origins of those structures were forgotten. Some say a race of giants once lived on this island. Giants. The giants in Game of Thrones were most likely inspired by Norse or Germanic mythology, given that they inhabit the frozen lands north of the Wall, much like the Jotun or Norse giants, who were thought to inhabit the wintry realm of Jotunheim. In Norse mythology, the Jotun are descended from the original being, the giant Ymir, whose body formed the Earth. Ymir is also an ancestor of the Norse gods, making the two races sort of cousins, and apparently kissing cousins because it's not uncommon for them to intermarry or produce offspring. In case you're wondering how that even works physically, keep in mind that despite the connotation of the word giant in English, enormous size is not a requirement for the Jotun, although it isn't uncommon either. Their appearance can vary from enormous and misshapen to beautiful and of average size. There are a number of different categories for giants in Norse mythology, including frost giants, mountain giants, sea giants, and fire giants, who dwell in the fiery realm of Muspelheim. During Ragnarok, the Jotun will finally rise up against the Norse gods of the Aesir tribe and bring about the end of the world. However, unlike the Jotun of Norse mythology, the giants in Game of Thrones all seem to be a similar size, huge, and have a similar appearance, ugly. No offense, 1-1. Number two, dire wolves. He's dead already. <laughs> Unlike a few other creatures on this list, dire wolves are in fact a real species that existed over 10,000 years ago in the Americas. The real dire wolves, or Canis dirus, were the largest ever species of wolf, weighing around 150 pounds on average, 50 pounds more than the average gray wolf. Their name, dire, or fearsome, only goes back to the mid-19th century when the species was officially named. However, large, fearsome wolves have long played a role in the mythology of many cultures. For example, Fenrir, the giant wolf of Norse mythology, who grows too large to be bound, and eventually consumes Odin at Ragnarok. Or Amarok, a giant wolf from Inuit mythology, said to consume those who hunt alone at night. And of course, the different variations on the werewolf myth like the Navajo Skinwalker legend. Many of these myths and legends are likely inspired by exaggerated accounts of regular old wolves, but it's possible that those from the Americas were inspired by ancient tales of real direwolves, although this is impossible to prove. There are no direwolves south of the wall. Now there are five. The direwolves in Game of Thrones seem to be inspired in part by the real direwolf species and in part by mythology as I'm pretty sure this wolf weighs considerably more than 150 pounds. I'm here, yeah? <laughs> Number three, the children of the forest. Who are you? The first men called us the children, but we were born long before them. The children of the forest are a fictional race of magical beings created by George R.R. R. Martin for Game of Thrones. However, they resemble several creatures in mythology. For example, they share some characteristics with elves from Norse and Germanic mythology. But more so than elves, they resemble the Aeshi, Dinashi, Mound Folk, or Fairy Folk from Celtic mythology. We prefer to call ourselves the other crowd, the good name, the Dinashi. 
A she is the Irish name for a race of magical beings that appear in Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and sometimes English mythology, although there are many variations on the mythology depending on the source. These creatures are thought to be adaptations of Gaelic mythology regarding a race of ancient gods, called the Tua de Danann. In Irish mythology, the Tua de Danann agreed to withdraw to a hidden world after their defeat by the ancestors of the Irish people, the Milesians. And this is why the Aeshi are now thought to exist in this hidden world, or other world. Underneath the rope. Upside, Upside down. down. Exactly. Similarly, the children of the forest withdrew into the forest after their war with the first men. The Aishi are sometimes thought to inhabit or guard over certain elements in nature, like mushroom rings, hills, stones, and trees. While the children of the forest have a magical connection with weirwood trees, the Aishi are linked with hawthorn trees, and any disruption or damage to one of these trees is thought to incur their wrath. The Aishi come in a variety of forms and appearances, and in some depictions appear to blend in with nature, much like the children who have a sort of natural camouflage look. We need to defend ourselves. From whom? From you. Number four, the White Walkers and Whites. The White Walkers and their leader, the Night King, were created by George R.R. R. Martin, but resemble necromancers from mythology and folklore. A necromancer is a sorcerer who uses dark magic to resurrect the dead, often to gain secret knowledge or power, and tales regarding them date back to ancient Egypt and Babylonia. These tales eventually inspired the concept of the Lich, or undead sorcerer in fantasy fiction. However, Liches are also inspired in part by an old Slavic folktale called Kashe the Deathless. Kashe is a sorcerer with a skeletal appearance who has achieved immortality by separating his soul from his body and hiding it in a needle, in an egg, in a duck, in a hair which is locked inside an iron chest. However, if someone can open the chest, catch the hair, then the duck, crack the egg and break the needle, Kashe will be destroyed. Much like Tolkien's Sauron and his ring. But without all that other stuff. <laughs> the minions of the White Walkers, called Whites, are seemingly mindless, reanimated corpses, with a few exceptions. Stories and myths about people returning from the dead exist in pretty much every culture and likely originated alongside the earliest forms of religion. In the last century, a term from Haitian folklore, zombie, has become the most widely used name for a reanimated but decaying corpse due to its frequent use in horror fiction. The Whites do resemble a classic zombie from popular fiction, but their role in the Army of the Dead once again most likely has its origins in Norse mythology. During Ragnarok, the noble warriors who have died in battle and entered Valhalla, called the Inheriar, will fight alongside the Asir gods. However, the goddess Hel will call upon the dishonorable dead from her underworld to fight alongside her and the Jotun against the Asir, meaning these two opposing armies of the dead will fight to the even deader deadening death. Between these two armies, the Whites appear to resemble the dishonorable dead of the Norse underworld more. I only hope that at some point we see the army of the dead riding a ship made from the finger and toenails of corpses, like in Norse mythology. I'll just leave you to ponder that one. Number 5. Dragons I'd say you get used to them. But you never really do. My guess is you've never heard of the obscure mythological creature called a dragon before. Ah uh, yes, yes I'm kidding. Dragons are one of the most referenced mythological creatures throughout history, and possibly the most popular. They feature in the mythology of many cultures, but most famously in that of Europe and Asia. Chinese dragons are traditionally depicted as long serpent-like creatures with a horse or camel-like head, as well as the characteristics of several other animals. They are usually depicted without wings, but are still able to fly due to their mystical ability to control air and water. Depictions of these dragons go back well into the 5th millennium BC, and influence the dragons from many other Asian cultures. European dragons come in a variety of forms depending on the culture. For instance, in Norse and Germanic mythology, they are typically described as serpentine, and even called worms in some classifications. Daenerys' dragons seem to more closely resemble traditional Western European dragons, with their lizard-like bodies, prominent wings, and of course, ability to breathe fire. Dracarys. 
In European myth, dragons frequently symbolize the threat of paganism against Christianity. For instance, in the legend of St. George and the dragon. In Welsh myth, a battle between two dragons, one white and one red, foreshadows the outcome of the war between the Saxons and the Britons, and thus inspires the image of a red dragon to represent the nation of Wales itself. But what about dragon riders like Daenerys? In several East Asian cultures, the goddess of mercy, Guan Yin, is often depicted atop a dragon. However, a bigger influence on Game of Thrones is likely English folklore about Blue Ben, a dragon who acts as a steed for Lucifer himself. This may have influenced Tolkien's concept of a dragon-mounted Nazgul in Lord of the Rings, and by extension, George R. R. Martin, especially now that the Night King has a dragon of his own, and one who breathes blue flame no less. One of the reasons Game of Thrones feels so rich and layered is that it draws from George R. R. Martin's extensive knowledge of myth, legend, and history. So I hope this video gave you a bit of an insight into the mythology behind the novels and series. If you'd like me to cover the mythology behind another aspect of Game of Thrones, or another series altogether, let me know what it is in the comments below. Or let me know what your favorite mythical creature from Game of Thrones is. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos on the legends, myths, and folklore behind your favorite shows and movies. Until next time.